All right, we're on the home stretch of the back end. I know this is not the most interesting part, but maybe it is so you can understand really how the logic works and that sort of stuff. So let's jump onto the users table. We're almost there and we've only got a few more things that we need to add. We've already added these names because we needed to reference them before. And this is what I meant by, about you know jumping back and forth a bit. You will have to do it. It's never gonna be exactly linear. But with that being said, Let's continue. So we've got the row ID, the name, the email. What we want to do is add something here called the client ID. We want to drag this up to the front. Then we want to add something called the invite plan ID. And what this is going to do is when you're, this is obviously just the ID of the client. So if we're a user and we're part of example client that it'll link it like that the invite plan id is when you invite someone so let's say they've purchased your subscription wherever on stripe on webflow on wordpress whatever it is you can then invite them to join your platform and when you invite them you need to specify which plan you would like the client or the company to be on so what it'll do is when you send an invite, you'll have a choice to select which plan. It'll put that here. And then when they are doing the onboarding, it will automatically put that plan here. So that's how that works. Um, we don't really need to dive into that too much. Although for now we can just kind of copy and paste it in like that. So we've got the invite plan. Then what we need to do is add a column, an email column, and this email column is going to be the admin. So any email that you place here will be given access to this row's data. I don't want to dive into that too much. It's, it's a little bit confusing. But for now, we add the email column, the admin column, sorry. And we can just place us as the admin in this column. So even if we put, for example, a new uh, row and it's a different uh, user we would put our email here and it would give us access to be able to pull and uh, basically access all that data a little bit confusing but you just put it in place now and, and I'll explain how it works later so then we want the role then we want the name split the first name the last name and what we want to do then is leave the photo there. Then we're going to add a client and this is going to be a relation. So what we want to do is look up the client ID and match it with the client. So you can see here that this user, um, the client ID is this. And so it's pulling in that client there. So we're just going to kind of roll on through. We've done it all before, so you don't really need to uh, hear me explain it in depth, but this is going to be the client name. We're going to look up the client name and it's going to pull that in. Then we're going to add the client logo and that's going to be a lookup. We're going to look up the client logo. Then we're just going to keep adding these lookup columns because we want to pull in all the data from the client uh, profile or row into the user profile. So then this is going to be the brand summary. So we're going to look up the client brand summary. Then we're going to also look up the client uh, brand guidelines. So this is going to be brand guidelines. I never know when to put an E. Anyway, so that's going to be the brand guidelines. Then we're going to pull in some more information. And this time it's going to be from the plan. So we want to, I don't believe we referenced the plan actually. So let me just check, look up. No, we haven't, we haven't pulled in that. So what we want to do is add a relation column relation where 
the uh, invite plan ID matches the plan row ID. So this is going to be the plan. Um, in fact, no, we want to just look this up. Excuse me. We want to just look this up in the client because we've already added it to the client. So what we want to do is just go plan name and we want to look up the client plan name. My bad. Um, so there's not much else. This is mostly just pulling in information, right? So we're just going to go look up because most of the information is within the, the projects and the client. And then this user table is just kind of pulling information that's relevant in. So we're going to look up the, um, the requests quota. So we're going to pull in the requests quota by looking at the client request quota. Then we're going to pull in the requests uh, made. And that's also going to be a lookup. We're going to look up the client and see how many requests they've made this month. We're going to see how many requests they have left this month. And that's just going to be a lookup client requests left. Then we are going to also just pull in the current month. So this is all just information that we've already created, we're just pulling it in. And the reason we need to pull it in is because we'll be using this information on the user profile pages as well. So we've got the current month, then we need to um, monthly quota. This is just gonna be a title actually that we're using. Um, I believe it's just a template. Yep, so the month quota. So this is a template and we're going to use this to display relevant information on the profile. So instead of um, this is if you this this is templates allow you to basically construct dynamic strings. And what we want to do here is this is going to be the string, but we want to always replace month with the current month. So you can see here that it's changed it from month quota to September. 2022 quota and this always bugs me with glide they make it very hard to expand this last uh, column but you can see here it's changed from month quota to September 2022 which is the current month quota and we'll be pulling that simple piece of text into the interface at a later stage so I've only got a few more steps to go so what we want to do is uh, the next one, I believe, is just looking up how many requests. So total requests completed. Again, this is just a lookup from the client. Total requests completed. Then we want to look up the queued count. So look up client queued count. And this is queued count then this is processed count that should be in brackets um, it's a lookup of the client and how many requests have been processed and so what this is going to do for each of the users that are part of this client or belong to this particular business they're going to see this same information no matter who they are. Um, and so this just allows you to limit, for example, if one person has placed four requests, well, all the other users are going to see that they've used up the company's total allotted uh, requests. So that's how that works. And then we've got three more columns, almost there, guys. So these are just going to be uh, a simple Boolean checkbox. So what we want to do is say, have they completed the first step of onboarding? And then the next one is exactly the same except for step two. So have they completed the second step of onboarding? 
if they have completed both, then they get access to the rest of the app. But until these two boxes are checked, they'll be on the welcome screen where they have to input this data. So that's, again, once we build the, the uh, uh, interface, you'll be able to see how I can show and hide elements based on true and false of these particular fields. The last one is pretty simple. We're just going to use the template field to pre-write an email for the user. And this email is going to be a pre-written upgrade email. So what we want to do is you can replace my name with your name. So it could be hi, Bob, Sally, whatever, whoever you are as the freelancer. I'm currently on plan and would like to upgrade. Cheers. And then they put their name, but this will be done automatically. So we put plan, we put name and we replace plan with the plan name and we replace name with the name, the first name. So this will be dynamically adjusted. And instead of, we can't really see it here, but you, oh, you can. So hi Marco, I'm currently on light plan and would like to upgrade, cheers. And then their name inputted. So that's it guys, all of the back end is done. It's all organized. The only thing we need to do now is come back and adjust this. And what we want to do here is if the row ID matches the client, um, what do we want to change this to? This is clients, uh, plan ID. So this is that one that we were, we were supposed to change before. So you can see that there is one client which is the example client that's on this particular plan. If they were on a separate plan and we come in here and we say that they're on this plan, then you'll see that it'll now associate them with a different plan. And you'll also see that since they're on this plan that has 12 requests, if we go to the client and we look at how many they have left, they now have 11 left. So this is all running in the background. It's all gonna be seamless. And this is why it's important to just build it out properly because it's just going to be a really nice, well-functioning app. So what we want to do is just, we'll switch that, that back to the light plan. They are, the client is on the light plan. And that's it guys, back end done. Let's move on to the interface next. All right, so I know I said we would jump onto the interface, but before we do, what I actually want to do is just clear out the dummy data that we were just putting in then to show the examples of how the different fields work. And I'm gonna load in um, two example projects, one example client and one example user. So we can uh, visualize a little bit easier when we're building the interface, what it's gonna look like. Because if, for example, we're setting up an image field, but that project doesn't have any images yet, it won't actually show anything any sync, anything. So um, I'm gonna spend the next couple of minutes doing that. You don't have to watch, there's not really a point. I'm just gonna load in some demo data and then we'll come back and then we'll start building the interface. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly go through the information that I've just added, the demo information, and then we're gonna jump into building the interface. So all I've done is added a new user. They're called Matteo Marbedolo. Um, I've added their client ID here and I'll show you the client that I've created as well in a moment. But all you really need to know is that you should assign um, row owners to three columns. The client ID, so you can click uh, add row owner. The admin column, which is just your email from top to bottom for every row. And then the email column. And essentially this is just dictating who can access what data. So people within the same client um, so employees of the same client can access other employees' data and the client data. Me as an admin can access everyone. And then of course, each individual user can access their own data. We don't need to dive into that now, just assign it to these three columns. The role column that we don't really need to touch, all you need to do is assign admin to your column, your row, sorry, and leave the rest blank. We don't need to touch that. The name split you can see is just splitting the two names. 
Um, and then there's not much really added to this column because all of the information is uh, to this table because all of the information is just being pulled from somewhere else. So let's jump into the client um, table and I've just created one client. Uh, it's Marble Maestro. It's a, I don't know, some sort of marble graphic design company. doesn't really matter. Um, I've assigned them on a plan and it's the light plan. So I'll put the plan ID here, giving them a logo, website, brand summary, and then just an example brand guidelines document. And then again, the rest is really pulled in from another table, which is the projects table. So I've created two example projects. One is called the beautiful dark wallpaper and the other is called the gold and blue royal marble wallpaper. So this client loves making marble wallpapers. Um, so then what I've done is just put in the IDs, the appropriate IDs um, manually, but you'll see when we design the interface, this will all be done automatically. So don't worry about if this just looks like a bunch of random uh, strings. Then I have basically just put in a requested date. So when did they request it? Um, what description for the, for the project have they entered? And then just added a few other small details. None of this is really important right now. It's important so we can see what we're building but you'll never really be coming into the data editor and entering your own information. It will all be done through forms and automation and that sort of thing. So with that being said, we've got the demo data, we've set up all the tables, we've set up all the columns. We are ready to build the interface. Now, the reason I like to do all of this first is because then we have all of that information available when we're building the interface. We don't have to jump back and forth so much between the data editor and the layout editor. So. Enough talking, let's begin building the interface. If you enjoyed that video or you found it useful, then I highly suggest you subscribe and hit the bell icon because I have a ton of low-code videos and tutorials in the pipeline for you. And if you like the idea of becoming a low-code developer who can create anything their mind can imagine without code, head to lowcode.com and sign up for one of our online bootcamps. See you next time.